Hello and welcome to my report on the solar PV and Powerwall performance at our property for April 2021, which has been a sunny but cold month. Like last month, some of it will be fiction, as it took most of the month before the Tesla system was back to reporting sensible numbers. Here's the first graph showing the electrical energy coming into the whole property according to the utility and solar meter readings. The total solar production this month was 872 units, a daily average of 29.1 units. 263 grid units were imported, with 14 of these units being drawn at peak rate, a few more than hoped for at this time of year. Nearly 95% was imported at off-peak rate, but that percentage ought to have been higher. The figures for the export to the grid, and the data behind the blue bars below the horizontal axis, comes from the Tesla app. In March, I stopped using the figure shown on the grid usage graph and instead calculated the number from the solar figures, the percentage of the total solar said to have gone to the grid. For the past year, those two figures had always been in agreement, but not for this past month, when the grid figure has been exaggerated. More on some days than on others. 103 units is my best guess at what was exported to the grid over the month which would have been 9% of the total energy coming into the property and 10.8% of the solar energy produced. This next graph shows what the energy used by the property came from, and these figures come from the Tesla app. At the start of the month, the app was still over-reporting the draw from the grid. On the 14th of April, the app dropped all pretense of reality and told me that the property had used 129 kilowatt hours and that it had drawn 116 kilowatt hours from the grid, although the meters only said 10.6, and that we had exported 90.1 kilowatt hours to the grid. It later transpired that someone at Tesla was remotely working on my system that day, as for the following three days, the figures were back to normal, and back in line with the figures shown on the meters. Problem solved, or so we thought. On Saturday the 17th, my wife and I decided to spend the sunny day starting to clean the pool and its surrounds, ready for what we hope will eventually be warmer weather, though we're still waiting. On Sunday the 18th, it was time to switch on the circulation pump to filter the water and to try out our new heater, which meant taking around 3 kilowatts on L3, our third phase, which had been almost unused over the past six months. There was plenty of solar coming in, and the power wall was filling steadily. What should have happened is that the Tesla gateway should have balanced this pull on L3 by sending the same power from solar and or the battery back to the grid on L1, meaning that our utility meter wouldn't register anything. But when I looked a little later, the Tesla app wasn't showing the usage on L3. A quick check of the utility meter showed the daytime dial steadily increasing so I switched off the pool heater and ran the pump off an extension lead from a socket on L1. That was the cause of the biggest red flash on the first graph. By mid-morning, the power wall was full, so export to the grid started at a more than high enough rate to cover the L3 demand, so the heater could go back on without the meter registering any draw. I contacted our installer and he immediately got in touch with Tesla again. The installer arrived a few days later on the afternoon of the 22nd and started to measure the power in all parts of the system. It transpired that, when Tesla had reset our system on the 14th, they didn't know what to do with the L3 phase as there was no activity on it. I hadn't appreciated before that they can flip the direction of the current being measured by the CT clamps in software, and they had set up L3 the wrong way. When I started drawing the 3 kilowatts on L3, the Tesla system interpreted that as exporting 3 kilowatts, though there is nothing capable of exporting power on that phase, so it didn't see any need to balance that on L1. After flipping the L3 measurement in software, everything once again looked normal, so the app figure for the final days of the month are good, and I hope for no more problems in the future. Back to the graph, where I'll go through the figures reported by the app. Around 35% of the energy reportedly came from the grid, 30% of the energy used was said to have come via the power wall, and most of the 33.1% said to have come directly from the grid was used by the storage heaters. This month, I've added a second table on the right, showing the number of units behind the percentages in the top table, 
and these can be compared with the meter readings. On to the third graph, which shows the energy going into and out of the power wall each day, as reported by the Tesla app. 88.7% of the energy that went in during the month came back out, around the same as last month. Here's the self-power graph, based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self-power was around two-thirds over the month, but this is partly based on dodgy figures. Here's the Solar Southwest production over the years since 2012, so it's back to the more reliable meter figures. The monthly figure of 459 units is only bettered by last year and ties with 2015 in second place. The April arithmetic mean is now 395.1 and the median is 399. The cumulative number for the year's production for the first four months is 907 units, putting 2021 in the middle of the pack at fifth equal out of 10. Here's the graph showing the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The 28-day moving average lines are almost where they were a year ago, and the more powerful old southwest array is doing better now that the sun is higher in the sky. Here's a quick look at the energy input for the past 365 days, and the daily solar production for the same period which shows that the 22nd and 23rd were two of the best solar days in the past year. Here's the summary graph for our electricity usage since we moved here in the summer of 2011, which has been included and explained in recent months. Peak rate units, labelled N, make only a small contribution to the bill now. As is normal at this time of year, the monthly electricity bill is coming down, and the FIT payment for the Southwest generation is shooting up. That's it for this month. I'll leave you with the energy usage graphs from the Tesla app for each day of April, unreliable though they may be in some places. Next month's report, if you come back to have a look, will be based on better figures.